Hi guys, thanks for tuning in today. Uh, today I've got a package from Hobby King, uh, the international warehouse, and this should be my thrust stand, which is the uh, V2 version. So let's get this open. Okie dokie, so let's get this box open. Uh, one thing that uh, I find unusual is that it says lithium ion batteries inside. I didn't think the thrust stand came with uh, any batteries, so we'll have to check that out when we get inside. Oh, so no extra packaging, that's it. Basic instruction manual, get her open. I thought it would have came in a extra box, but obviously not. Looks pretty cool. Uh, one thing I am noticing is that this blue is a completely different blue to this. So on the side we've got an input, an output, 5 volt in and a throttle. On the top we've got our dial for the power, on, mode and tear. So let's get some batteries in it. I think we need to go in through the side here with these 2mm screws. So it's a little bit more complicated than the original thrust stand. Uh, looks like we've got to put some AA batteries in here. The uh, display is lit up already. We can see we've got 0G on there. Yep. Okay, let's put the battery back inside. It's nice that they've gave you a bit of Velcro to hold it on inside. All the vibrations aren't going to be having it rattle around. Okay, Koki. Backlit display in blue, looking pretty cool. And if I put a bit of... Uh, you can see that it's actually changing there. That must be with the weight of the actual uh, metal itself as I'm holding it. It's registering the weight transfer onto the load here. So if I push forward gently, we can see that we're starting to get thrust and come off it. So uh, I would assume that the power meter itself won't uh, power up until we actually uh, add a battery on there. So let's get this set up. So I'm going to do my first test on some DYSBE 1806-2300KV motors. Uh, I've actually got these to replace the DYS1308, uh, I think they were, on the uh, Baby B. I'm going to four cell on that, so I'm going to need a motor that can actually handle that kind of current. So that's why I've gone for these uh, cheap but cheerful BE 1806-2300KV motors. So again, using the 2mm uh, driver, we can get these screws out pretty quick. For the purpose of this test I'm just going to use the two screws. Now one thing to take note of is the screws are very small and they almost actually pull through uh, the gap so it might be worth putting washers on these uh, if you're using some powerful motors and the screws are too small. But I've pulled on this as hard as I can and those two screws aren't coming through. So let's put it back on the uh, stand. So now for the initial setup. Uh, we're going to plug our battery in here to give power and uh, then we're going to need power to come out from here to go to the ESC uh, and through to the motors. So to do this, uh, I'm using uh, this, just a bit of wire, some crocodile clips on the end, and the XT60, so I'll stick that on the output, like so. And I'm gonna power it like this. So we get power into our ESC. Now your signal cable is going to go into the bottom here, which says throttle on it, or THRO. that in there and then all that's left to do is to plug these in there we go that's the basic setup done power out to the ESC through to the motors signal into the bottom cable here let's uh, put a prop on and see what we can do 
let's start small with some 4045 gem fans. In fact, let's go over to my other bench because this has cloth on it and I don't want this blowing around and possibly getting stuck in there. So we'll go over to my uh, bench that I use for soldering. So let's do our first test. I'm just going to use a 1300 4 cell uh, just because that's what I've got charged up at the moment. And this is just a initial test to see if the machine works. Let's turn it on. We've got zero on the scales. I'll zoom in. And let's put a power supply in. So you can see that it's uh, pulling a little bit of amperage just to uh, power up the ESC. So I'm just going to hold on to the stand and turn this slightly. So we can see our amps and voltage as well as uh, the watts. One thing I would have liked it would be a percentage uh, on the throttle here so we can see when we're at 50%, uh, 75, 25. So let's see uh, what we can pull on a full throttle on a 4 cell using a 4045 prop. I think we maxed out around 307 there. Three hundred and five that time. So as you can see, this is uh, changing down here, and each one of these means something different. So AP means peak amps, so AP five point nine amps. Uh, WP means peak watts ninety six. AH means amp hours used. So let's have a look. And oh, we don't have an AH. WP, AP, WM, WP. So for some reason we're not getting amp hours used. VM is for uh, minimum voltage, 16.11. And WH is the watt hours that we've used. Which again is not coming up, so maybe the uh, instructions are slightly different to what's uh, going on here. But I'm surprised that on a 4 cell, uh, 12 amp, I'm only pulling 6 amps on uh, the motor. So maybe we'll put a bull nose on there now and see what we get out of that. Well, one thing's for sure, there's a hell of a lot more vibration. I can feel this through the test stand itself, so these props aren't going to be very well balanced. So I'll chuck these on a balancer and see how that's coming out. But I can certainly feel all that vibration through here. So we've got our frog prop here. Let's see how well balanced she is. Well, obviously not very well balanced. Let's see if we can balance this out and see if the vibrations are much better when we put it back on the test stand. So we're looking about right there, but this is ridiculous. Most of the uh, area here is covered in tape and to be honest I still think it needs a slightly bit more. Well that's not very good is it? I've had to cover pretty much the whole entire surface of this prop to get it to balance. As you can see. Hmm, not very good. But anyway, let's put it back on the test bench and spin it up again and see how the vibrations feel again. That's a great thing about these uh, thrust stands. I mean, I wouldn't have really realized without doing a balance uh, check how much vibration there was. Now, 
I knew these would have been out of balance, but not by that much. Uh, so, wow, that really proves the point that uh, testing your equipment can be uh, quite useful. Obviously, all of these vibrations would have been passed through the uh, motors, into the arms, into your frame, and uh, to your flight controller, which, uh, again, is not going to give you the best flight performance. So let's stick it back on the bench. I can immediately feel how much smoother this is now, so balancing those props is very, very important. It's not moving along the bench now. <laughs> now it is. <laughs> so let's do one more test again. I'll just turn this so you can see it. Okie cokey. So with a balanced prop, AP 11.86 amps, so slightly less amps that time I think. WP is the peak watts, 189 watts. But it certainly felt a lot smoother. Just in case you're wondering, yes you can fit the 5 inch props on here but we're getting very close to the bench so probably 5 inch maximum on a bench test as you can see 6 is uh, far too large. So obviously to run bigger props you would have to stick it over the edge of your bench like so to do this or you could uh, mount this maybe on a block of wood that would uh, lift you up a couple more inches. So that's it for today's video guys. I will be following up this video with plenty more thrust down tests. I'll be following up shortly with the free cell tests. That's all for now, bye.